Welcome to an intervention here with Clay Taylor, who works with uh, Texas Filmworks. It's been really awkward recently. By the way, it's Texax Rewind on a Friday. a and about to get started. Buddy, uh, I have a restraining order with you, and you can... T okay. Let's just not make it more awkward, okay? Okay. Uh, this is your first time on the show? With you. Big fan of the show? Big fan of no, the no, show. No, no, I'm not talking about that show. I'm talking about this show. This is a different show of that show. Oh, my gosh. This I'm is such a big fan of this show. Do you, what's it called? Uh... I just said the name. Texas Rewind. Yeah, does Texas have... Radio Rewind. Oh my goodness gracious! I'm sorry, folks. This is this is not going the way. I... You know what? Just sit there quietly and pretend like you didn't even come. All right? I can't even bring you anywhere. We had Billy. Okay, now I got awkward. I had to flex a little bit when you did that, though. We had Billy Lucci on the show. You're a fan of Billy, right? He's he... my boss. He cuts my checks. Yeah, but he's a good guy. Uh, he's talked a little bit about getting back to uh, practice. We'll be going to practice here shortly. Uh, Eric and Frisco called the show. He's got this awesome formula slash tabulation analytics on AM having the talent to win the national championship. I talked about some title contenders, AM, of course, being one of those. And Billy Lucci on uh, Clements and Johnson, our 21 and 21 presented by Factory Builder Stores. And this guy. Hey, man, physical touch is my love language. What can I say? That's where we're supposed to go straight to the video, the sound, and you continue the uh, dialogue. You're supposed to end it right there. Fade the black. Goodness gracious. Sorry, folks covering fall camp i'll go back to basically 98 so and then if you go back to like let's say at least the college years where my roommates were on the team you go back several years before that so you're approaching like 30 where i get pretty personally pumped up for fall camp to start Wow, goodness. I, I didn't even think about it from that perspective but you're right that's a, a lot of football and a lot of first days so when we're there, we probably can't see too much, right? They're not going to open it up to us watching some amazing plays that we're going to tweet about and then ruin their game plan. But at least for me, I want to see the size of some of these guys, what they've put yeah. in the offseason, how much bigger they look, and just, just the, the kind of the mood, the vibe of the practice. Yeah, I think the energy out there will be interesting. And I know it's just a first day, but you can tell differences, man. Like, I mean, you're not going to be able to say, that, oh, wow, that's an undefeated team. That's an SEC title contender. But you can, you can tell a difference. Like, all right, this team just feels different. And it, it doesn't happen in one day. But over the course of a few practices in fall camp and, and just to see that, the, that energy and that intensity out there, um, how excited they are to be out there. It's always at a higher level at the beginning, but – I'm just telling you, with certain teams, you can tell the difference, not, not in today, but fairly quickly in, in terms of leadership. Can they sustain that energy day in and day out? Uh, do they have a really business-like approach once things get going? Do you see players getting on other players to perform? Little things like that you can, you can kind of watch for. But, yeah, I mean, today's a day to see – Wow, look at that. Like, who's that? You know, the true freshmen or the newcomers. Holy cow. Look at, you know, look at uh, Albert Regis. I thought this is summer when I saw him at camp. I saw Albert Regis and go, damn, that, he looks a lot better than, than I kind of remember or what I thought he was going to look like. Same thing with a guy like Zion Harris that no, nobody's really seen that came in at the midterm from New York and apparently physically looks great. Um, that was, that was impressive, how you were able, were able to put your mute on. I, I can't do that. That was good. And, and Griffin, but Griffin does not like it when I sneeze. <laughs> he, he thinks I'm in distress. So I, I should have left it on so y'all could have heard the cute, adorable little reaction there. But, uh, no, I, you know, that's the other thing. And to see these returning guys, I mean, we noticed it with Isaiah and Damani when they came in studio a few weeks ago and, and, and by the way, working on some really nice uh, NIL stuff for the fall. I'm just we're keeping it quiet right now until we do it. Um, but yeah, just seeing the the just seeing those two guys come in in the studio, and you go, wow, they're really Isaiah looked a lot different physically, and we talked about it during the interview. So that's what I look forward to on day one is stuff like that, and uh, that that's about that's about it. And then also, well, you know. You day one, you look at who this, what the starting lineup and the the number twos look like and that we can see out there, and then you take that and you compare that to ten days from now, and you like to see how much different it looks, and you get a feel for what kind of moves are being made on the depth chart. Well, man, so how did this uh, analysis come together? 
Yeah, so um, kind of ironically, the, the, the similar question kind of popped into my head uh, a few months back, and, you know, I decided to kind of start diving into, you know, college football and college football recruiting um, and kind of how that affects college football. And, you know, we always see the same teams in the college football playoffs, and so I was like, I wonder if, you know, we can make it really obvious um, kind of why. And we know that recruiting is extremely important, so um, I kind of just dove in and I – took all of the recruiting rankings from 247 um, from, I think it's 2003. So when they started all the way till 2021. And what I did was I looked at each national champion from 2008 till now and found kind of what their recruiting ranking total was, right? So the prior four years, it should give us a kind of an idea of what the talent looks like on each one of the teams. Um, and then from there, I took, you know, and the, I think the average um, came out to be about 1136, right? So that's, you know, all the recruits summed together, right, which should be kind of a holistic look at their team. Um, and then I took a standard deviation back from that and got about 1048. And then all the teams that are greater than that for this year is what that list is. Um, and the list that you read is actually in order of, quote unquote, most talent to least talent. So those top teams of Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, Clemson, LSU, the ones that have won, um, or in Georgia's case, not won in the last, you know, six or seven years, you know, they're, they're float to the top every time. And I, I see your note that Texas A&M 1106 point four was their number, um, which is above yep. the, uh, above with the least talented champion, which was in 2010, you had a uh, cam, uh, in Auburn. And, you know, one of the limitations of the way that I did this, um, just to kind of save my own sanity, um, is it doesn't take into account transfers, right? So, like a Brew McCoy, you know, transferring from, um, you know, USC to Texas and then back and inflating Texas's recruiting ranking a couple of years ago, or, you know, a Justin Field transferring from Georgia to Ohio State, that kind of thing isn't reflected in here. And so Cam, for example isn't reflected in the recruiting rankings for Auburn for, for those years. But obviously Cam Newton was a, an amazing player, and it just goes to show that he what he did on a, on a kind of somewhat inferior team um, relative to some of the other champions that we've seen in the last um, you know 15 years or so. Yeah, what made uh, Auburn win is on third and five, Cam Newton would always get six yards. <laughs> yes, he would. You know, and I think Nick Fairley was the only other player, one of the only other players on that team that was really – um, really, an individual standout, sure. and, and 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 he wasn't even until that year. I still think the 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 list is small, and it'll stay small throughout the year. It's not going to be a huge, expanding list. And realistically, from that realistic group that can win it, you get three from the SEC, and a couple in a couple of the teams. We're going to play each other in the first week of the season in Georgia and Clemson. What does that mean for Georgia moving forward or Clemson, right? Clemson's going to be in the mix because they're going to win the ACC. But Georgia really needs that game. Georgia absolutely needs that game. But Bama, A&M, then who do you got? You got those three for sure in the SEC, Clemson. And those are the real, realistic ones, in my opinion. Oklahoma, I, I did put them in the uh, the initial conversation, but they're just outside of that. But they're going to probably get a seat at the table, and that's why you have to take them. Uh, and Ohio State's going to get a seat at the table. You're not going to have three SEC teams in there. You're not. Absolutely not going to have that. But it is it is trending in that direction. And when you look at what A&M has to navigate through, I I love the way their season starts. I think there's a lot to be excited about getting some of those reps early on uh, and preparing you for Alabama as opposed to how they went through it last year and, and the tests that they had. But you start off with Kent State, Colorado, New Mexico, then Arkansas. Favored in all of those games, in, including Mississippi State, but I feel like they're, they're a buildup. Each week is kind of a little bit tougher. Now, New Mexico is, is a, not that they're a buildup, but Arkansas, even though I think – will destroy them. Those games are always interesting. Mississippi State, you know, you don't, you destroyed them last year, but you don't know what you're going to get with Mike Leach and, and that offense if they're able to figure it out here in year two. But again, all those games leading up 
to what will be a great October 9th atmosphere here. And when we head out to practice later on today, it ain't going to tell us anything, guys. I apologize about that. We're really not going to know much. But at least we're going to see them. At least we're going to get um, some movement towards that first game. And I'm just pumped about it. I am absolutely pumped Thanks. about it. He was playing pretty good ball last year and then got hurt and was never able to come back. Both, both of those guys could have gone to the NFL, particularly Clemens, uh, who, was a, who I think was a senior last year, uh, and came back, opted in, one of those super seniors this, this season. And, man, when you see him, He's always been a first off the bus guy, but he now he looks like a, a, he's starting in the NFL along a de- along any defensive line. The good news is his play has started to match his physical stature. He's still not going to be that twitchy edge get around and, and collect your double digit sacks guy, but he has gotten more and more difficult to block. He has gotten better and better against the run, uh, which is something you know that that this Texas A&M defense under Mike El- Elko has been outstanding at, and that they really value almost above all else. Mike Elko will figure out how to generate pressure. He'll have guys to generate pressure, and Clemens will be a part of that. That's just not the strength of his game. His is more physicality. Um, that length allows him to set the you know set and and you know. Uh, sustain the edge there, keep that integrity. But then you have Tyree Johnson, who is probably, as far as veterans go, he is the twitchiest, get around the tackle, get really low, dip that shoulder, keep your feet, make, you know, pressure the quarterback, force him up into the pocket, into those bigs on the inside, and also collect some sacks. I think, there you go, Tyree. Um, nine and a half career sacks. I think he's had four sacks in A&M's last two bowl games. Um, and this is a guy, again, you see that nine and a half sacks. If, if he is the guy over there, Nuno, this year, and they don't have like a rotation, because there are some really good young defensive ends that are kind of ready to play and ready to contribute. You think- All right, guys, we're going to make it really even more awkward. I want you guys to see what I used to look like when I was 25 years old. Richard Zane, stand up. That was me when I was 25. This is me at 45. Richard's like, how old are you, 23, 24, 22, 24? That's young Richard. We wore the same shirt today. We didn't mean to do that. Clay, what are, spo- uh, what are you supposed to do when you watch this video at the end of this video? Uh, you're supposed to like it. You're supposed to subscribe. Oh, oh my God, that was so weird. My head, I got a concussion. So you're weird. You're supposed to share it with your friends on social media. Do everything he said and check out texaxcom slash subscribe. Do it all. Share it. Tell people sharing is caring. Thank you.